Hi folks, if you're watching this, then you're on level six uh, criminology with offender management last year now. Seems to have gone very quickly. Uh, just to go over things then, your course diet then looks something like this. Your dissertation, which is a 40 credit module, runs over semester one and two. It's not a semester two module, it's semester one and two. 10,000 words. So try and split your workload over the two semesters. Try not to leave it. I strongly advise that you don't leave it to the last February onwards and try and do it like a lot of students. You've also, in, in semester one then, you've got serial killers, community justice, um, You've got those modules in semester one. And semester two, you've got rehabilitation of offenders and mental health assessment for non-mental professionals, non-medical professionals. So just to break things down a little bit, the community justice module, I've spoke about this in the generic one, you need to purchase or get access to the Leroy Campbell case. This is going to be central to community justice, one of the case studies that we're going to look at. We're also going to be looking at the probation service, community orders made by the courts, how court sentences are planned, managed, supervised in the community. Um, and different aspects of the purposes for community justice, what sort of punishments are served in the community, what can go wrong then, as we've got these SFOs, these serious further offences, this is where people are in the community, they've either been released, uh, they've been, been before the parole board and released, or they've been to court and been sentenced in the community, or they've just simply left the prisoner being supervised in the community, and then they've got on to commit some horrendous offences. So Damien Bendel and Jordan McSweeney, Leroy Campbell, to name but a few. So we're going to look at what, how and why that happens. Um, we're going to have the benefit of some guest speakers coming in and we're going to do some role plays. There's a very practical uh, module I've been designing this all over the summer. I've done a lot of research and a lot of work into this. I've interviewed two of my students who work for the probation service uh, and they've helped me sort of come up with the content. Similarly, with semester two in the rehabilitation of offenders module, which follows on from community justice, that again, practical looks at, well, it looks at some of the theory behind rehabilitation in its own right looks at some of the tools and toolkits that are used to rehabilitate people, different courses that have to go on, um, with a view to providing some sort of theoretical rationale behind some of the rehabilitative interventions that are provided um, by the state. So that's that's the second semester. So the they are quite symbiotic. They can be taken separately, but they do tend to sit together really with community justice and rehabilitation. Serial killers then, which is, although it sounds glamorous, it's a, it's a very popular module with people, with policing students and criminology students and offender managers. We talk about criminological theories yet again, but this time applied in practice. So the ACEs, the adverse childhood experiences, um, issues around the brain, neurocriminology. Why you know, are people born to kill? Are they born deviant or are they created by their environment or better both? Uh, so we do look at that. We look at some notorious killers like Fred West, who has this sort of neuro, this pseudo psychopathy. We look at psychopathy. Uh, and personality disorders and things like that. So although it's got a glamorous title, it's very relevant to understanding the mind of a, a criminal, the criminal mind, and what makes 
a person commit the ultimate crime, murder, over and over again. So it's quite an intense module, very popular, and normally, well in my experience, students have always scored very highly in the exam, so that's an exam, two hour exam online and, and the IT labs, but nevertheless, that's some of the highest marks and the most impressive answers I've ever seen at university. Um, mental health assessment for non-mental health professionals, we're rewriting that, it used to be a nursing module. Myself and Lucy Pointon are rewriting that, making it more relevant to the criminal justice system. I'll be delivering that with Lucy. Uh, obviously mental health, very significant with people who use the criminal justice system, both working it and have access to it as victims or perpetrators. So looking at people in prison uh, who are sort of presenting with mental health problems, different types of mental health problems and what can be done to mitigate that. Uh, the dissertation project though, and I've talked about this in other um, posts, but if you are working in the criminal justice sector, then I strongly advise that you would undertake your project on the job that you're doing. If you are going to research something, you need to research something that you're passionate about. So it's very important that you choose the right topic because you have a lot of words to write, i.e. 10,000 words, split up into chapters. So treat that very seriously. Um, we have got some impressive guest speakers coming in to talk about the, the probation service and the justice system in level six. So hopefully you'll find, I, I assure you, you'll find level six um, stimulating. If you're not, then please let me know. But I'm, I'm pretty confident you are going to enjoy it. So it's, it is very, very fast paced on level six. I personally think level six is, seems to go very quickly when you teach and study on that. So do please make the most of it. If you've got a job, obviously if you're working in the prison, you're gonna find that useful. If you've got a, just a normal civilian job, then please just think about putting this first because you'll have years and years to work in the workplace. I make sure, In January, I'll have been in the workplace in the criminal justice system or teaching about it for 40 years, four zero years. So my advice to you would be for the next eight months, when you get so sort of October to April, just mark off everything for that small period of time, dedicate all of your time to uh, your level six, securing a great sort of grade first class if you can. And then after that, you're gonna be working for a long time. So you don't need to bother about working at the same time as you're studying for this eight months, because trust me, that eight months will go into insignificance with the years of work in the workplace. So don't rush too much into work when you're supposed to be doing your degree. You have plenty of time to work. Thank you.